Stocks are lower, and the Dow, in fact, is right near session lows at the moment, ahead of that Fed decision on interest rates next week. And my next guest says the stock gains will continue, but be a little harder to come by from here. Joining me now is Steve Auth, the Chief Investment Officer of Equities at Federated Hermes. Welcome to you, first of all. Thank you, Kelly. Exciting times. I get, can I ask you, I'm just going to throw this out. Why would you think that GM and Ford and, and so, why are all the company shares trading higher today as they head into what looks like a, an existential crisis for them? I, I, it may just, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing. I, the opposite of that. Right. Yeah, a little bit of bounce here. Um, thinking people are realizing, well, the strike's not affecting all of their plants, mm -hmm. which is kind of what everyone was thinking until they saw this morning that we're only talking about three factories. So maybe that's that's it. I, I don't know. These have hardly been high flyers. Longer term, this is a tough, the, the tough business. They're trying to make the transition to EV. Uh, they got labor price yeah. you know, problems. Um, tough way to make, make a buck. I remember sitting here with Bill Miller, or I think we were in New York, but maybe five or seven years ago, and around the time that Tesla was on one of its, you know, spurts, stock spurts, and I said to him, well, what about Ford and GM? Wouldn't that be, you know, you could take a look at it. I mean, I think the stock prices today might be where they were back then. Ford yeah, I mean, they're, they're trying to work on two platforms simultaneously. Tesla's only working on one, electric. But True. But all the big major And that's hard enough, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and these are, you know, very capital-intensive businesses, and so... It's just until they make the full transition, which could be another five, seven years from now, I think they're just tough businesses. Well, Tesla, NVIDIA, these kind of $900 billion stocks have been to some people where the easy money of the last a little while has been. Where do you think the harder you know, money or the harder gains or the harder investment decisions are now in the market? Where do you, where do you think people should be looking? We really think the market's going to broaden out here, Kelly, uh, and it's been grinding out with earnings. The, the broader market's trading about 15 times, 15 and a half times earnings. Is it that? Low? Yeah, the average equal weighted S and P. Equal weighted, okay. Yeah. So, and, and there's lots of stocks uh, in the financial sector trading at single digits, industrials, uh, you know, trading at mid, double digits, maybe at best. Um, you know, so I think those are going to be the areas here as the concerns about this recession kind of blow away, and you have all these companies where the management teams were preparing for the recession, so their cost structures are in pretty good shape. Your inventory levels are pretty tight. Uh, and then the stocks are kind of reflecting a, a recession that doesn't come. So you get a kind of double goose there. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's kind of a stock picking game from here. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, you're not buying financials broadly. You're buying kind of best in class or, you know, a little bit safer. So like Goldman, PNC are some of the names there. You do have some tech. I mean, ASML is maybe the quietest, most important company in the world right now. You've also got Alphabet. You've got Amazon. You've got IBM. Yeah, well, IBM is is a kind of value play in tech. It's a misunderstood story. People, you know, fell asleep. They think it's still an old industrial tech company, and it's mostly software and services now. It's got open uh, cloud computing is a big piece. It's going to be an AI beneficiary. Stock is starting to move, but it's trading way below uh, the levels of other big tech stocks. So the value names like that we think are interesting here. Would, would you say that you still have major concerns about kind of the setup in markets? You know, some people worried about bond levels. They're worried about, you know, the debt or deficit situation, how that could play into that next year. Um, I'm just curious kind of what you see as the biggest potential pain points. Well, it's been a slow moving adjustment. And that's what we, you know, I always say that time is on the side of the ball. Hmm. You take the regional banks as an example. Every month that goes by, they, you know, put away exist, another, yeah. <laughs> another couple of percent in reserves against the commercial real estate crisis that everybody knows is coming. So these kind of slow moving things give uh, managers and investors time to adjust. So I think that's been sort of the theme here this year that, you know, the more this thing gets put off, uh, the more everyone else gets to adjust and then it doesn't happen at all. And that's kind of where we are right now.